Ricky, another playoff bound team coming in here. What's uh, the group looking to build off of what you guys did on Saturday? Well, just get off to a good start. You know, obviously, got to stay out of the box. Um, <clears throat> you know, the two games, um, being with Vegas, LA, giving them a couple of goals early. Um, that's really what it's down to, especially now. You got to got to get to your game quicker and be more disciplined. At this point, what do you think of the way you guys have matched up against this, these specific Pacific Division teams late in the year? Do you like getting a chance to play these teams quite a bit at the end of the year and kind of yeah, test I think it's great. You play this type of hockey this time of the year. They're important hockey games. You know that's that's that was our goal at the start of the year. Now and now we're in them. So yeah, you should you want to play really good hockey teams right now, hundred percent. There was a time not too long ago where structurally, defensively, you guys weren't giving up a lot of shots. You weren't giving up a lot of chances. That's changed a little bit in the last few losses. Um, what do you think maybe you, you haven't been doing as far as your staples go as well as maybe you were earlier? Yeah, I don't know if I agree with that narrative. I don't think we're giving a, a ton. I know obviously Vegas, a couple of the, the odd man rushes, you know, I, you're going to have those. Uh, I hate those. But I thought for the most part, you know, we're just a lot of teams are converting on their chances. We're not. <clears throat> so it looks bad. So um, we got to just our conversion rates got to get better, and we got to stay out of the box. And um, you know we're giving up too many power play goals. Where do you think Petey is at with his game? I know that, that Jim said I think in an interview with IMAC that um, he's not himself right now. Is that to suggest he's dealing with something physically? I know he's had some maintenance <clears throat> days, or is it more a confidence issue right now? No, I don't, I don't think he, on the road trip. I thought there was some really some good stuff there. I I, I think he's he's coming. You know, uh, you know we're at a stage. Um, you know, we're trying to find certain, you know, people to go. And I thought that line has actually, you know, they've produced, they got us some goals um, and you just got to keep sticking with it. So, yeah, I think he's, uh, I thought the road trip was pretty good, actually. I think his game is coming. Well, it's the process every day of trying to stay even keel. And yet there's the urgency of what's happening in the next couple of weeks. Just game today. Don't think about tomorrow. Can't think of, of two weeks from now. You know, um, worry about just today. We, you know, we're a day-to-day -day team. That's a, a bit the way we've approached it all year. But now that because the stakes are higher, there's you know now we're going. You know, we're made the playoffs. Now it's like what ha there's a lot of who are we gonna play. You know, who's gonna play with who? Like before, it was just whatever is in front of your the task at hand. Tonight's game. Now we're it's getting um, you know people's minds are wandering. Not saying just in general because it's like. We're going to a different level, right? Is that a Plus. challenge? It's a challenge for me to get these guys to make sure just worry about today. Like, worry about the Vegas Knights. Don't worry about who we're going to play. You know, are we going to win the division? Are we not? Is Edmonton going to catch? Like, there's too many variables. You you can only control your first shift tonight. And I think that comes with experience. Guys, you know, guys with their experience can kind of just focus on the task at hand. So I think um, it's important that our staff – messaging and it's got to come for me to make guys minds not wander just worry about tonight's game is that experience related to trust as well and what i mean by that as a player out there i mean you have to trust your teammate and when you start trying to do too much now you're not doing anything right i mean is that a big thing right now is stressing that trust do your job and let everybody else just focus on theirs yeah a hundred percent because when you don't trust or you're you're not being aggressive in your mindset what do you do? You're a second late. And I feel there's parts of the game where we're a second late. We're just cautious. We're not cutting a reset off. Or our second four checker is not in there because he's not quite sure for whatever reason. It's the same game. Um, you know, I hate to say it. It's October. You still got to play October hard like you're doing now. Uh, for some reason now, stakes are higher. Maybe people are kind of waiting to see what's going on. And you can't wait in this game. You got to go. And um, – and there's plays to be made, and we got to make them. Like, there are a ton of plays to be made, and we got to start to be aggressive and make those plays. Just to follow on that, Rick, uh, Ian Cole said with Sully, because it was a veteran group in Pittsburgh, when he told them to just go play, they could just go play. How do you tell your guys, your playoff newbies, to just go and play when they're thinking about what it's going to be like in the postseason? Do you leave that to your leadership group? Yeah, you coach different teams. I mean, obviously, a veteran team, you, you, you know, you don't have to say as much, but – um, for me, it's it's I gotta c c keep create a relaxed atmosphere. Put you gotta put heat on players in a certain way, but you also gotta make it a relaxed environment so they can still be creative and let it go. You know, and I think um, that's really what we're trying to accomplish here in the next two weeks. But tonight, same thing. It's just it's a it's one game. Two points are available. 
and you can't worry about anything down the road. Or, you know, that's really what it comes down to. An era where team toughness was defined by how many times you dropped your gloves, especially yeah. in the postseason. It's a different game now. Uh, team toughness can be how hard you are in pucks, how hard you forecheck. How do you describe yeah. team toughness in today's game, Rick? For me, it's body position. So when, you, when you're a team that's hard to play against, you're always in the way. <clears throat> if the puck's available, you, your body, you, you know, it's body position first, then the puck. It's just harder. You know, it, it, even the skill guys, you know, if you look at the Crosby's, McKinnon's, um, like they, everybody looks at the speed and the, the, the but they are probably the best 50 50 battle guys in the league. They are because they use their body first and then they get the puck. So I think that's the one thing that we're co constantly learning here is we got to be a hard team playing against by our body position. You know, not going running guys. I mean, sure, you'd like a guy to hit some big hits. You love that. But the body position in front of our net, the body position in front of their net, you know, to score a goal. If you can box out their defenseman where if there's a rebound, you got the rebound, vice versa. You know, I think that's really what playoff hockey's about is body position. Sometimes it's about sending messages. I know a lot happened late in the game in LA on Saturday and, yeah. and Quinn took a really hard hit from Moore. Uh, Moore had one more shift before that game was over. Should there have been some sort of a response to the hit? <clears throat> I mean, honestly, I, I didn't, uh, I don't know. Like uh, that's a tough one for me. Okay. The goal is to play meaningful hockey games this time of the yeah. season, which you have and which you are. Five games to go, three of them are here at home. What do you want? How do you want your team to author this narrative in these final five games leading in the playoffs? What do you, what do well, you want to worry, see? Just worry about us, 90%. Like, you always worry about the other team pre-scouts. And I'm a, I've always said I'm an 85, 90% us, 10% the other team. Um, it's probably less now. It's probably, you know, you can cut that ratio to 92%, eight, because we know how Vegas plays. I know I can do I know exactly what they're going to do tonight. Um, and they know exactly what we're going to do tonight. We play L.A. We know what they're going to do. So really it comes to the execution. And, and honestly, um, just the wherewithal to stick with it. Like it's okay if, if eight minutes <clears throat> things aren't going great, um, but it's a neutral game. You, you know, you, you can't, like footy calls, you can't go rogue because you're losing one nothing. All of a sudden, you can't have everybody just flying all over the place, losing their position. Next, all of a sudden, it's 2-3 nothing. So, um, and I thought we've done a good job this year of not going rogue on, on, on certain things. But um, you know, I, I, I still think the last two, three games or three games, we had chances to win. They just The other team converted. I mean, I think LA had two chances or three chances in the, in the first period, both power play goals in the net. You know, and then we make it 2-1, to one, they score again, right? 5-3, they score again. It's one of those things. Elias Lindholm was a full participant out there. How close is he to returning? When do you anticipate him coming back? And an update on Thatcher, because I know last week you told us you want to get him at least one game. Yeah, Thatcher's doing great, uh, like unreal. So I, I don't have an exact date, and uh, Lindy's day-to-day -day still. Rick, uh, based on how you took morning skate, looks like you're making a switch on your second and third pairs to, to some pairings <laughs> you've used in the past and starting our tours tonight. Can you speak to... What you're looking for with those lineup tweaks? Well, I, I think first of all we got to shore up the PK. So um, there's possibilities. You know, you can go 11 and seven. You know, Julson's a good penalty here. So we, you know, we're still in process of discussing that because we're letting too many goals on the PK, and I think Julson could help on that in the back end. Um, but you're just trying to find, a, you know, you're just trying to find at any time to tweak some some uh, pairs right now, but. We got to get to it fairly quick. We don't want to, but I think guys are used to playing with certain guys. I mean, it worked the first 56. It wasn't always the same guys, but um, you still get it some chemistry, 100%. And sorry, on Artur is getting the start tonight. <clears throat> yeah, I think he's played really well for us those two games. I, you know, this is a, di you know, it's a, it's the same game. I know it's Vegas compared to other teams, but um, I've liked his demeanor. I like he looks big, big in the net, and, and like I told him today, just go have fun with it. You know, I, I don't, I don't think the moment's too big for him. I really don't. Uh, the game you won in Vegas, the three-one game, it seemed like they had a ton of trouble um, getting moving vertically against you. And then the last time you saw them, as you noted, there was a lot of odd man stuff, which which you didn't like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is there a, a cat and mouse game going on there? Is there an adjustment that needs to be made out <clears throat> of tonight? Yeah, there's a little cat and mouse. I mean, Butch is a, is a really good coach, and um, he doesn't just, you know, his system works, and he's a successful coach. So um, when it comes to, yeah, there's a couple things we might do a little bit different tonight, but it really comes down to execution. I mean, there's some plays there 
in Vegas and in LA, uh, even even in Arizona, where they were there, and we we just didn't we didn't connect or we just didn't see it. Um, and I think you just got to keep that approach. It's more of the execution for me than the the cat and mouse game. You talk about the day to day and yeah. trying not to worry about the big stuff sure. that's coming down the pipeline. I, is that a challenge as well for a head coach, just in terms of maybe wanting to see different guys together yeah. or, or experiment with various combinations, do all the get, gather all the information you want to have for when the stakes raise in a couple of weeks? Is is that something you deal with personally in addition to worrying about it for your players? Oh, 100%. I mean, I know a couple of weeks ago, I, you know, I, I was probably the main culprit because I wanted these guys to understand the next level, what's going to take. So I was pounding that in their head. But after a while, it's like, I got to stop doing that because it's really, uh, you know, what, what we were successful this year is day to day. Right, and if you start to talk that way too much as a head coach, then guys get nervous, they get antsy, you know. So I think the the message is like, let's just worry about today. Now, when it comes to lines, you know, Lindy being out, it's a challenge because you know different different um, position. Um, you know, there's you, you, there's always do you load up, do you not load up? You know, it's usually the third line in the playoffs. History says it dictates a, a team that wins in the playoffs. So. I'm a big third line guy, so do we find a you know the real good third line for us? So these are the th questions that you talk about every day, and um, we're, we're going to have to try to figure that out. Rick, we saw Bluger score for the first time in 40 games the other night. You sat Suter in Arizona, which I assume was a coach's decision <clears throat> based on his recent play, and then you've got guys like McKayev and Lafferty and and Suter as well, who are all double digit goal scorers. But since Christmas, it's really been a struggle for those guys. Is that just a case that like their production came when they were playing higher in the lineup earlier in the season, or what do you need to see from some of those guys here ahead of the playoffs? Well, I think it's a different game the second half compared to the first. Uh, that's number one. Uh, you know, especially now coming the stretch drive, there's more urgency in teams. You're playing. You know, we've been playing higher level I IQ teams, better structured teams, so it's harder to score. Um, so that's really comes down to it. And then when you play higher, you know, you do have to produce. Um, and you're trying to find combinations. So, you know, I'm a pair guy. You know, I've usually had Bess and, and Millsy together. And Hoggy's been with uh, um, Petey. <clears throat> and then, you know, you had that really good, you know, the third line was really good for us. So you know, now that we got Lindy, that's going to really balance out the lines. Should some of those guys see Lindholm on the horizon coming back in, though, and, you know, fear for their spot of the lineup or like for those guys like do yeah. you want that internal competition with five to go here as you try to set a an optimal playoff lineup yeah i mean listen that's like and there's four or five guys they're buying they're, yeah they're looking for ice time you know um but um you know even back then it's not like it's not like they were playing 17 16 minutes they were they were you know they were playing their time the same almost the same amount of time it seems like they were converting better for whatever reason so um but you don't want them squeezing the sticks like they just got to continue to, um, and, and that, it, it, sometimes it just wear and tear on the other team, uh, keeping the four shot, keeping the puck in their end, making their best players defend. I thought we did a good job of that first half of the year. Those guys did a good job of doing that. That's what we got to get back to.